Yes, guys, we're still giving away 500 XRP if we hit a thousand likes within 24 hours. Make sure you press the like button, make sure you are subscribed with the notification bell on, and make sure you comment something down below because that's all you need to do to enter. And let's get on with the video. Is it too late to invest in crypto? I know the article here says Bitcoin, but I would more so like to talk about crypto in general as that's a way more interesting question. And really, to, to answer this question, I must ask you if you've already gotten some. Because this question is kind of general, right? Too late to invest? Well, you could already be invested and then invest more. Is that called, you know, still, are we talking about the first or, or what? So, it will really change drastically upon how much you have and what your average prices are and what your monthly income is and all of that and what your goals are. And so, there's really not just a one-stop answer. However, let me let me give you guys a couple of things, right? If you have not gotten any crypto, I would always recommend to get into it at least a little bit. I would always recommend buying at least a couple of crypto. Maybe get yourself a nice little basket of some Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Chainlink, and um, you know another one. Pick another one. Who cares? Just pick a couple coins. You get a little bit. By the way, this coin. What did what did it just do here? It just got to the eighth position. What happened? Oh my days, guys, I don't even know. I know Polkadot, but I, it just got listed then? Because that's insane what it just did that right there. That's that's looking pretty damn crazy. Sorry, guys, I just saw that. I got a little bit confused and a little bit uh, amazed. But yeah, just get a couple of coins, just like maybe five or ten, and get yourself just some small percentages in those so you have at least a little bundle. It will be fine. You know, it might go down for the next couple of days or months or weeks, who knows, but eventually it will go up anyway. So just get a couple of coins and, and be golden. That's if you have zero, right? You got to just get yourself into a little bit. Otherwise, you can't emerge yourself or submerge yourself fully into the whole realm of crypto. Now, having said that, though, if you've already gotten some and you know a little bit more about what coins you like and what coins you want to get into, and more specifically, you're watching this because you like XRP, I would recommend going for the DCA strategy where you are trying to lower your average price as much as possible. Now, again, this will kind of depend on what your average price already is as of this point. But let's say your average price is $1, then and you, you have 1,000 XRP. I would recommend buying at least 1,000 XRP more at, for example, right now, 30 cents. Or maybe let's say you buy 4,000 worth or maybe like 3,000, whatever, choose something to make sure your average price is below 50 cents. And the reason I'm saying that is because I and most people I've ever talked to do believe that XRP, whatever happens, will at least go above 50 cents somewhere in the future. Even if it might take a little while, it will do at least that, which will at this point mean you're doubling your money. But if you're at a dollar, it will mean cutting your money in half, right? So get, even though this is not financial advice, none of this, and you should take it with a grain of salt, I recommend going for that strategy. We're just buying into it to make sure your average price is below 50 and then you'll most likely always be in profit. So then is it too late? Well, no, definitely not because we're still at a low point. Also, if you think Bitcoin and crypto in general have not reached their full potential yet, or even if they have already, but they'll get to it again, with Bitcoin, there's still 70% to be made. Ethereum still 250, XRP still 1260, Bitcoin Cash 1500, Litecoin 500 and so on and so forward. There's still a lot of money to be made, even if we only go back to all time high which there's a pretty good chance for, right, to get back to that point. So just putting it out there, it's never too late to invest in crypto. Just think about your average price and just think about never investing more than you're able to lose as that will always be a negative thing. Even if you made a good choice, I will never recommend investing more than you were able to lose. Multiple Bitcoin theories arrive at the same conclusion. This is funny, right? Because we're talking about, you know, investing in crypto and really about the theories and all of that. Bitcoin sliding under 12k wasn't surprising, considering the number of failed taps added. While the retracement is a healthy correction, it is uncertain to accurately predict what might happen in the future. However, there are theories and models that try to do exactly that. For instance, the 4-year cycle theory states that Bitcoin moves in 4-year cycles, with 200 weekly moving average acting as a support. The fact that a halving occurs every four years also fused this theory and it seemed true for a while however the bear marks 2017 seemed to prove otherwise the reason why the four cycle theory fails is due to the lengthening bitcoin cycles the first bitcoin cycle lasted 400 days within which the bull market lasted for 250 days second cycle lasted for 1150 days and the third for 
is on its way and already 623 days have passed. Then again, Bitcoin's ROI cycle. Based on ROI cycles, the price of Bitcoin will hit a peak somewhere in late 2022 and estimates the cycle to last 1,760 days, leaves 730 days for Bitcoin to hit its peak. Coincidentally, this also falls in line with the popular yet controversial Plan B's start to flow model or ratio model. Both models come to a similar conclusion regarding Bitcoin's top that one Bitcoin will be equal to about $100,000 by 2022. So that's in about two years. Uh, and, and let's see here. Yeah, about two years, August 22nd, 2022, that will get to about $100,000 or potential peak $118,000. And that's basically the, the, the ones you need to know about. Although the 40-year cycle can be discredited, ROI cycle theory still needs to be disproved. And this will happen only when Bitcoin reaches its new peak. And so all I can tell you guys about this as of this point is wait it out once more. A lot of theories are thinking, you know, next two years are going to be very, very big for crypto. And maybe you don't have two years. Maybe you don't. Well, all I can tell you then is you're bad out of luck because it might take some time. Doesn't mean it's going to take some time to make some money because, again, on this channel and on the finance channel I have and on the five minute crypto channel I have, I'm always trying to explain you guys how to get some good deals. Right. And I'm going to be doing more and more on that on my other channel, which is right now called the business realm. Make sure you check it out and make sure you subscribe to it. Link in the description down below because I want to give you guys a lot of tips with how I grew my businesses and how I'm doing really, really well right now without really needing crypto. Right. And which is also why I'm never really worried about buying too much or getting too much into it. Because I'm like, well, you always got to be comfortable with your holding. And if you can't buy more, you can't buy more, right? It's just what it is. You never have to regret any of your investing decisions. You shouldn't because there's always other opportunities and you always fetch them. And also, if you're not putting work into crypto or not putting money into that, you're most likely spending it somewhere else, right? Which is also another investment. So you can't have every piece of the cake. Right? You got to split it a little bit. Right, you gotta split a little bit. You gotta, you gotta get. You can't only eat one cake forever. You gotta get a couple of different cakes as well. That's not for every subject in life, you know. I'm not trying to tell you guys to go cheat and things like that, but I'm just telling you, you know, there's different pieces of pie you can taste, and you should maybe taste a couple if we're talking about investing. New IRS form puts crypto front and center. A new draft of the 2020 IRS 1040 tax returns form has been released. The form asks about virtual currency on the very first page. The move is a signal to cryptocurrency traders that the IRS is paying closer attention than before, which is getting very freaking scary, guys. Honestly speaking, the more and more this comes along and the closer it gets, kind of the scarier it is going to be becoming, right? Because they're, they're looking more and more into crypto and they're liking it. You know, they're liking that they can ask you about more and all that like a couple years ago and here you can see there wasn't any question in the 2016 version yeah yeah it's only gonna get worse you know honestly speaking it's only gonna get worse piece by piece and eventually they'll know about every single piece you have and there's no denying it whatsoever all i can say about it is well too bad for you all right it's gonna come to all of us too bad for all of us <laughs> that's all he can say it's just never nice right taxes are never fun but you can make them fun if you're smart about it also robert kiyosaki says it as well right that taxes are the rich man's friend and the poor man's enemy because if you play it smart you never have to pay taxes theoretically speaking uh, depending on what country you're in in the netherlands if you really don't want to all right you can go to no just kidding uh, you, you, you can kind of get away from it by buying things and then never paying taxes. Of course, then you're not going to be left with the most amount of money, but you're spending it instead of paying tax. It's really possible. In some countries, I heard, at least that's that's something I've heard, I've never really seen it before, that it's not possible to get out of the tax completely. But I believe, right, with, with if you have your own business in almost any country out there, uh, for example, if you're in, I guess, the UAE, you even have to pay 0%, but that, that you always have before tax deductions, right? Is that in any country so or are there some countries which have limitations on that i don't know you know the netherlands has a couple of really good rules for a lot of the for a lot of property things and all of that which is why i'm pretty happy uh however the normal income tax is like 52 percent or so which is ridiculous if you think about it so to a certain degree it's also a shitty country in that perspective however again here what you're seeing in front of you i shouldn't have said however but all right chris larson executive chair of ripple argues China can reverse Bitcoin transactions. I don't want to get fully into the article because I still have a little spot for it later today in another video. 
But basically what it points towards is Larson cites an article on how China has more than 65% of the global Bitcoin hash rate. Although the University of Cambridge and uh, for alternative finance that conducted the report explained the overall hash rate in the study may not be fully representative. The CCAF commented their study represents only a little more than a third of the total hash rate and all the data is provided by the three Bitcoin mining pools that are all headquartered in China. The CCAF hopes to provide a more in-depth report in the future that can add data from major mining regions such as Siberia in Russia, Washington, New York states in the US, Quebec and Alberta in Canada in upcoming reports. Still, Larson argues, in his opinion, peace to policymakers, that dangers still exist with China taking over the Bitcoin protocol. Quote, it's not hard to imagine a dystopian future. A U.S. defense payment to an ally could be blocked or reverse. End quote, says Larson. Very scary, but very truthful, right? And that's why a lot of us were really, really hating the idea of transactions being able to be reversed. Because what they're thinking about here is, for example, if there were to be a standard with, for example, Bitcoin, which the U.S. wants to send to some allied troops, um, they just want to send that payment. All of a sudden, China is like, you know what? Let's um, yeah, let's not do that. Let's reverse it. Er, skirt. And the reason they can do it is because they have more than 50% or more than 51% of the network. So they can 51% attack it to a lot of double spending, but also to reverse transaction to make sure that nothing really happens. That is if they were to cartel if they were to form a bond together. If they don't, of course, it's still not possible, but the idea still stands that um, some crazy stuff can be happening if they decide to, you know, try to mess us up. And I'm still kind of afraid of it, you know. I'm Like anybody is, you're still a little bit afraid of the consequences um, of those things happening. Then, there's going to be a sell-off in the stock market if Congress doesn't pass more stimulus. Guys, I'm telling you once more, there is so much talk about this right now. There are so many guys who think the, the market is going to be flourishing. There are so many who think the market is going to be just destroyed tremendously. There are so many that think the U.S. right now is going to be in the most prosperous time ever. There are so many who think it's going to fall down to the ground right now. There are so many theories that I, I don't even want to comment on it even more. Or I want to keep it kind of in the middle right now just because I don't really have any new information that I haven't told you guys in the last couple of days. And the fact that all this stimulus here is really making my mind go absolutely berserk. I'm, I'm getting completely kind of dumbfounded by all the stimulus, all the QE, all the numbers, all the money that's moving around here. And still people are not better off. Like, how can it be? So much stimulus and still everything is kind of on the verge of crashing. It's understandable because, of course, the, the U.S. dollar could become worthless. But on the contrary, right, this statement is contradictory on its own. There's going to be a sell-off in the stock market if Congress doesn't pass more stimulus. Why it's contradictory is, well, there's going to be a sell-off because theoretically speaking, a lot of uh, guys won't be spending their money. A lot of places will most likely go bankrupt. A lot of people have less money, so they have to pull out of the stock market. Also, though, if they do give out more stimulus, a lot of people will lose their faith in the U.S. dollar. A lot of companies will not get investments anymore from abroad. A lot of ROI and just yield will not be uh, delivered or, I guess, kind of not trusted upon. Bonds would do bad in the U.S. and things like that, which all would hurt for maybe the banking system and all of that as well. So it just depends on what stimulus we're talking about here. Um, for example, also a lot of other uh, big companies like banks and all that who are too big to fail, sort of in quotes, right? They might still fail. If things were to hit the fan. And what I mean with that is there could be a bigger wave coming up, maybe a big second wave, maybe here in Europe, maybe somewhere else, just a big, big, big event happening, theoretically speaking. Again, I don't have facts, which in the end, at least as far as I know, might really mess everything up. You know, it might really mess everything up, might need a lot of more stimulus to get themselves out of the, the ditch, out of the hole. But again, that is it for today, guys. Let's actually skip it with that. I have another article on Warren Buffett here, but I'll talk about it later today in, a, in another video that's coming out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, though, guys. Make sure you do that by pressing the like button, being subscribed, and commenting something down below. Wait, what did I say now? Uh, did I say, like, you should subscribe by doing those three things? Whatever. Just make sure you subscribe for more content, guys. I, I post every single day. post a couple of really cool and good videos, in-depth stuff about whatever I think is important. And also make sure you go ahead and follow my other two channels, uh, Dusty, or at least it was called Dusty Finance, now the Business Realm, and 5-Minute Crypto.